Hey guys, can you all hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. These headphones, like one of them is broken, but and it's the side that has the microphone on it. I can hear you loud and clear. Oh, good. All what's, right. What's going on with your shirt there, Harry? Oh, um, uh, I was cold, and uh, this I think this is one of my son's shirt. It's like a mariachi singer dabbing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't <laughs> thought that's what it was. I was just making sure. I haven't yeah. seen that shirt before. Yeah, it's not probably something I want on the on the internet. Uh, but <laughs> it's I was cold and it was clean. Um well hello everybody. Uh welcome back from the long July 4th weekend. And uh well it's been a minute. Uh, we, we so what happened, the reason why it's been a minute is because you know, we were thinking about the July 4th, like a long time ago. I, I think I was thinking, you know, we should take the Friday off before that way you could blast it out and have fun and kind of ease down. And then I forgot about that. And I was like, no, we should take Monday off. And so I had already told like half the people. So the, so, you know, at the end, it just became easier for us all just to take both days off, <laughs> but <laughs> which is fine. Cause we published Beavers Daily on Friday, and, and we're back at it. But boy, uh, I was glad to have that long weekend off anyway after our debacle in Vegas, which that could take up a whole other podcast, Jordan, so I won't get into that. And so uh, we have everybody on the call today because I wanted to introduce uh, our staff and some people that you may not that are behind the scenes. I forgot to send this to Hunt, by the way, my, my son who does editing and some uh, graphic work for us, and i or did I? No, he's, is he on here? Nope. Oh, well, sorry, Hunt. Because, uh, you know, I think we have the best staff in BevAlk reporting by far, uh, often imitated, never duplicated. And so uh, you guys, most of you guys know uh, executive editor, Jen Litzkirk. Say hi, Jen. Hello. So, you know, Jen, they can, so one of the things is, you know, they only see you on the end product when you're when on camera. When I make noise, yes. When you make noise, you know that now. <laughs> okay, good. Because uh, you're like, can I pick my nose when I'm not on camera? And I'm like, Jen, you do it anyway. So yes, but yes, the answer is. Yeah, then, I'm always picking my nose when you can't see me. And sometimes <laughs> when you can. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And then uh, uh, on the uh, Wyatt Spirit side, you've also probably uh, uh, met, em not it, good Lord, I almost called you Emily, Sarah Barrett, executive editor. Say hi, Sarah. Hello. And uh, Sarah, how long have you been with the company? Too long. No. Um... <laughs> Everybody says that. Five, six years. <laughs> okay, cool. Jen, you've been there for 10. 10 pretty... long years. <laughs> that's, that's right. But I mean, you know, I met my husband at our first industry summit in Miami. So it's been a good ride. Again, long years. Oh, long years. Long, <laughs> hard, heartfelt. Uh, Jordan Driggers, beer editor. How long have you been here? Jordan, you have to uh, actually speak uh, when spoken to sometimes on the podcast. Well, you guys did get like two inches of rain within an okay. hour. So there's all sorts of issues in San Antonio connectivity. I know. Which, well, we just move on to Millicent Ryan, otherwise known as Chanel Gulf Coast, otherwise known as Chanel Matagorda, otherwise known as Chanel Corpus Christi Bay, otherwise known as the Millie the Miller Later, Millie the White House Doggy, uh, uh, well, since several other things. Millicent? Uh, how long have you been with the company now? Well, you, uh, kinda, you started kind of as uh, unpaid and then you moved into more of a real position. You know, how long have you been here? <laughs> a, a real position. Dealing with you is the biggest position. And I've been in charge of that <laughs> for almost six years. And it will be four years with the company coming up uh, next month, I think. Cool, 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 cool. And then uh, Jessica, kind of the Oz behind the wizard, the kind of that keeps all the wheels moving, the checks flowing, the people paying, our insurance paid, our bills paid, biscuit has enough biscuits. 
Um, <laughs> Jessica, how long have you been here? How long have you suffered? <laughs> <laughs> about six years also. Awesome. What do you least enjoy yeah. about working here? I don't think I've ever thought about that. I love everything. Yeah. Good, <laughs> Good answer. Um, <laughs> I tell you from my perspective, for somebody, I spend 95% of my time communicating just with the people on this call, <laughs> really. And, and, you know, and our, and our sources and readers, but other, you know, I don't have a lot of friends outside the business. <sighs> Not a lot of family, but, uh, yeah, I'm just, you know, it's so important to not only have people, uh, uh, that are, that are reliable and that really put out a great product, but just people you like to work with, you know, it's, it, to me, it's extremely important. I love working with all of y'all. I think we, it's been a journey. It hasn't always been that way. <laughs> there have been people here who I've just, just did not enjoy working with who did a good job i just didn't enjoy working with them for other, whatever reason usually that's my personality flaws rather than theirs but i really feel like we all at least from my perspective um have a uh uh you know a, a good working relationship and and uh i think that it was reflected that i was surprised when i was listening to the uh, ribo the rabo uh, i was gonna say robocop <laughs> the Rabo Bank, <laughs> the beverage analyst, they have a they have a great podcast called Liquid Assets. And I was listening to it and they kind of just broke into praise uh, for various trade publications. And there are only, uh, I think, three and we were included as uh, really, uh, the, you know, they specifically called out that they must have a really hardworking crew to put out so many publications every day and that they really looked forward to the exclusive quotes and content that they got consistently from our publications and you know often we don't think about what differentiates us a lot and it was nice to hear that from a third party uh respected folks who I, whom i don't know personally and let, you know i should throw that out they aren't like great they're like comil and caroline who i've partied with and gone out with i mean i know who these guys are but it's not like we're uh, super friends friendly and so coming from people who really don't know us that well i thought it was a great uh, uh you know maybe we'll have those guys on i want to do a banker week you know where we just have yeah i, I see you smiling over there sarah it, oh people give you, you praise people <laughs> give you praise so now you want them on your podcast uh -huh. I will remind you that we are having Tom Wark on the podcast from later this week from Fermentation Blog and the National Retailers, who um, has, I don't think, ever said a, a kind word about, about me, nor I of him. So I'm looking forward to it. I do respect oh, man. And, <laughs> no, it's not going to be, you know, uh, but it, I think it, the exchange of ideas is important. And, you know, I was thinking of um, somebody else that... Hannah. Probably we don't see eye to eye with. Who's Hannah? Me? Our, our own employee? You you didn't call, you didn't give her a shout out. <laughs> Hair bear? Oh my God. Well, I'm not done yet. Oh, this sorry. Is, this is, this is all the build up to it. <laughs> yeah. The, this is long form podcasting. Okay. <laughs> so I've read. It's in the biz. Um, so what was I talking? Oh, the, uh, uh, Andy Crouch, you know, he's one of the few other beer podcasters I've seen out there that's not mind numbingly boring. I'm not going to say it's exciting, I'm not going to go that far, but in other words, I subscribe to it and I'll re listen to it. And it's only every other week or something. You know, that what I hate are these podcasts that come out so often you can't keep up with them. You know, who <laughs> I'm like, like daily, who what do idiots do that? But I tell you, we wouldn't be able to do this unless we had uh, the workforce that really keeps the nuts and bolts moving of our publications. And I'd like to I'd like to call out Hannah for that. And Hannah, how long have Hannah Kruger uh, recent? She was an intern, so she's been here 
longer than most uh, regular editors. But uh, Hannah, how long have you been here, including intern? Okay, so I started in February 2020. So I've been here, I guess, going on a year and a half now. So. Good. Um, one of the things that I don't put a lot of uh, credence, I think, in like what your education, you know, what, what your uh, resume, I guess, looks like pre working days. But Hannah's, your, you know, your transcript really stood out as phenomenal. The, the kind of student you were, the extracurriculars, the grade point, all, all of that was like, wow, you're kind of too good for us, you know. <laughs> But, uh, but then I was thinking back and really every person here uh, has graduated from a good quality four-year college with a difficult degree and at the top of their class. Uh, as I thought you were going to say everyone it. here is too good for us. <laughs> Everybody's here too good for me, for sure. <laughs> Uh, and, and, you know, and then Jessica's served uh, in the U.S. military as well. So we, have a, we do have a band of overachievers here uh, who obviously are no dummies. And um, it really is a, a, a qualified cast, such a qualified cast of characters on paper, you know, and that's the really, that's not really important to me, but it worked out that way. And it probably helps translate into why we're, I think uh, uh, that you guys uh, just pick up things quick, more quickly and, and have kind of your own um, work ethic and, and those sorts of things that you can't teach or hard to teach really. <laughs> I wish we had a cough button. Um, you know the sound effects buzzer that I was using? Yeah. Jordan's coming back. Sorry. <clears throat> oh, that last hit of Coke just really didn't hit me right. Oh, dear God. <laughs> JK. I was saying that that <laughs> that little buzzer that has all the sound effects it was at the bottom of my backpack while Jordan and I were traveling through Vegas. And so at weird intervals, it would just go off on a random <laughs> sound. So like I'd be rummaging through on the airplane and go. <laughs> <laughs> and then it would start applauding and then. It was at the, always at the worst time too, like going through security and we have, you know, edibles in our backpack and our tat, our cab driver scared the shit out of us saying we're going to get thrown in jail. Anyway, like like I said, Vegas is for a whole nother slow day podcast. We actually have a lot of news to cover. So let's get on that. And then y'all don't hang up after this because I want to talk, uh, have a private, more private staff meeting <laughs> as if anything's private uh, on the podcast. Because uh, uh, I also want to talk about the podcast later. So um, yeah, so for today's issue, went back, looked back two years, like Bart's been telling us, you gotta look back two years, comps are crazy in IRI, you can't, and it's true, right? You look back and we're 40% up and then now we're down and is on-premise filling that void and it looks like it is. And, you know, so I know the comps are gonna get harder and harder, um, but it, to me, it seems like the on-premise is also getting faster and velocities are getting more and more than we thought. So you know, to me, and that's why I put best summer ever, because so, you know, other than supply from where I sit, it's looking like, um, especially if you go back and look at two years, performance is, is still up from 2019 at this point in the year. So that means that beer brand health is still strong, uh, despite the pandemic or because of it or whatever. And so I, I would say that we're sitting pretty well. The only caveat to that is that spirits is doing even better. <laughs> so it's not like we're taking over beverage alcohol. We're just kind of hanging in there with spirits, uh, which to me is a victory. Wine, eh, I think it's still, you know, like Sarah, you, you and Jordan have said that it's easier. There's a lot more pantry load there, I think, that people are working through. Anyway. The numbers were put forth not probably in the most elegant way. They were hard to read. Um, that's why I asked Jordan, you and Jen, to, just to look and gut check it. Looked, did it look strange to you? I was a little surprised, honestly. No, it looked fine. I mean, you know, when you added the shipments and the imports, obviously you had to wait the 
domestic shipments versus the imports, but it all, but you, it seems like you did. It looked fine to me. Nobody I had Bill look at it too. And Jordan thought it looked good. Good. Yeah. And uh, Jordan is good at looking numbers up down. He's not a big talker. I don't even know if he's on the call anymore, but I'm, which is I'm back fine. just in time. Oh, okay. So um, don't say anything bad here. Well, well, good. I was just about to sing your praise. I'm glad you hear it. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, uh, Jordan can look at this uh, mainly complex spreadsheet from IRI and go, well, this looks interesting. I'm like, where did you pull that out? And, and Biscuit, don't worry. Biscuit's getting a little jealous. Uh, Biscuit, all that means is less work for you. And honestly, you sleep 23 hours a day. So, m- m- you know, be glad. Um, but, uh, yeah, what do you think of those numbers? I mean, I think it's more impressive that we're doing better than last year, uh, just from a shipment perspective, you know, over 2019, it seems like all the numbers are up over 2019, but last year was a record year for most, for most in the beverage alcohol space. So to be doing even better than that is, um, pretty incredible. Yeah. The, the big headwind we're going to see is when Mexican shipments we start seeing those again in the comps later in the year. Um, when when is when do Mex when did Mexico start shipping beer again? I, I kind of forget. It was it was late though, right? Like I think April and May were the two just mm-hmm. shut it down crazy down months, and then after that things started to pick back up again because they were shipping as much as they could, not knowing if there would be another shutdown. You know? Oh, that's right. So it's earlier than I had thought. It's more like June, July when it started ramping back up ramping up but the numbers didn't get much better until toward the end of the year i think yeah fall winter yeah, yeah. i wonder i guess heineken's back to brewing dos Equis in mexico again i'm not sure about that even just a couple months ago didn't they say they were going to do they're even doing was it is it the arizona still even out out of the netherlands i forget but some brand that you wouldn't expect them to you know, do out of the Netherlands, out of the Netherlands, they're doing out of the Netherlands. So, mm. yeah, I think yeah. it is Arizona. Oh, I think they're back in the U.S. So I read somewhere they just got a bunch of capacity for Arizona. I think in Arizona. I don't know. <laughs> I read so many. You know, now that non-alk is in our orbit and how it affects bev elk. So now, I just, just reread so much and. I'm too old to take notes and read. So I just have to rely on my concrete vault like memory. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> uh, as of the recording, it hadn't run yet, but it will have by tomorrow. And, th- and that's the uh, interview that, that Jen, you did, which I thought was pretty, um, pretty interesting with the buyer from Specs. And if you're out of state, Texas, you may not know who they are, but they're huge here. They're kind of the, total wine of texas if you will total wine is now in texas so that's probably their biggest competitor and then you've got walmart wanting to sell spirits in the state so they've got they've got their work cut out for them but tell us a little what, what were your most interesting parts that you found of that interview yeah well of course i had to ask him all about rtds and seltzers and you know who's getting the cold shelf and because i actually walked into a specs the other day in san antonio and I saw, I was actually looking for some of the canned cocktails and I noticed that they were all mostly warm. And that must've just been like a one-off because, um, you know, Justin told me that they're getting, you know, the canned cocktails, the RTDs, obviously they're getting more cold space. It's coming from beer, obviously it's coming from uh, non-local craft. They're now for the, um, it's also, I guess some of the cold space is also coming a little bit from the spirits that they would keep cold prior, like your your uh, rumple mints, which I don't know who drinks rumple mints, but apparently people do. <laughs> now they're bringing like it standalone really... freezers to keep that stuff cold. It's that disgusting like mint thing that people drink. Anyway. Yeah. Um, it, does it really matter if it's cold is my question. <laughs> well, apparently people but... want to consume this immediately for some reason, but yeah. um, you know, and it was just interesting. I mean, he told us some of the things that we already know, like, you know, seltzers are still growing just a little bit, but 
they are now it's a war of attrition was the quote that he used. It's basically, you know, you're going back and forth between White Claw and Truly. He did call out Topo Chico Seltzer as like an amazing grower, like their 12 pack variety is the seventh largest beer pack for specs total beer year to date. And it's only been in market for like three months. You know, wow. so we, we do have sense for Texas though, right? For Texas, totally. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure if it's going to set the world on fire everywhere else, but and again, yeah, we'll see if they can um, keep up with supply, of course, but uh, you know, just those sorts of tidbits and um, you know, tidbits. I like the way you say tidbits. <laughs> I mean, you really are hiding your San Antonio upbringing. Is this a Whoa. Brooklyn affectation? Uh, Tidbits is like a regional phrase. I, no, I thought you that. said, oh, I, I misheard you. I thought you said tidbits. <laughs> like, like free tidbits. <laughs> yes, Harry, tidbits is very Brooklyn y. <laughs> Not just free tibet, free to all the tidbits. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, so, you know, RTD pulling from beer and wine from all over, you know, seltzer pulling from beer. You guys were talking about wine. They've seen a decline in wine for a while, decline in share, beer is flat, uh, liquor is growing. And that's one of the other interesting things I'd like to highlight is, you know, he's talking about liquor is being given a lot of reasons to grow. And a big part of that is the fact that every year beer takes price up. So, you know, he says beer used to be the last affordable luxury. And I don't know if that's true anymore. D this is very true, but to me, it's like, why haven't the liquor, I understand it's a lot cheaper to make. So there, but I, uh, it seems like they've left money on the table. And I think now that we're in inflationary times, maybe they'll see the light of the day. There's but, been a fair uh, amount of price increases. I yeah, think not, fairly regularly, not, maybe just doesn't like shock you. Yeah. Cause the beer industry is like three plus percent, but a buck 20 a case. I was shocked. When I was looking through IRI. I, I'm surprised we're still up mm -hmm. with the pricing up that much year over year. So I, you know, my, my whole theory that beer didn't take pricing is kind of out the window. I, a lot of that's mixed shift though, I would, I would guess, but I guess the, there's the total dropout of budget beer. Maybe that was enough to bring mixed mm -hmm. shift up a buck enough because that can't be, I haven't seen big price increases come through. Well, so. yeah, I think not having budget and then with all the supply chain issues, i you know, I think brewers are saying, well, we have to take some price to uh, to compensate for the cardboard, the uh, see, cans. I, I don't, but I, yeah, I just don't know that they have. I mean, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it get, show me a price sheet. We, we would have seen it. Yeah. It's been like. sporadic, I think. You know, I, I've asked a few distributors and it was kind of all over the place. So, yeah, I think the consumer has driven the price up on their own and that's why I'm saying that I think everybody should take pricing because consumers doing it for them. Maybe that's availability. They can't get their bush light. So they trade up to Bud Light. It's just the, you look at what's killing it and it's seltzers, Modelo and <clears throat> some F and B's. Yes. Yeah, some F and B's and, and crap. Hi. Uh, and Michelob Ultra. Yeah. I mean, think of the huge impact impul just Michelob Ultra alone has on mix shift when you think of the volumes that they're putting out. So I, lo I love how we're trying, we're figuring this out on the air instead of like pre-figuring it out and then giving our conclusion. But it's fun to l learn how the sausage is made, thinking through an issue. And, and then of course you can't deny that seltzers have such a much higher average price point than premium beer, that that's the... That's the main driver, and, I, and Michelob Ultra and Modelo are the other main drivers. So there you go. But Sarah, do spirits producers take price like every single year? Because beer does, right? Every single year, without fail, typically. Yeah, some, usually twice a year. It yeah. It seems to depend on the brand. I know, um, I want to say it's Campari has a pretty aggressive pricing strategy. Um, and you hear about it a little bit, but I, it really doesn't seem to be as it's either not as big of a jump or not as regular mm -hmm. um but it's only a few companies that really talk about it more um and a lot of that is like the high end cognacs or uh, i feel like they just like had more space to take the price like i feel like vodka doesn't really have much space unless you're like you know more premium and whiskey i mean you can right. start off pretty high right um but yeah i don't i don't feel like i see it as 
regularly and maybe because it starts off higher it doesn't look as much right you know it doesn't you don't notice it but the more fragmented it's harder to take price mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no. this is harry is this your baloney special harry this is from uh pot belly it's just a Italian oh. sandwich i'm moving up in the world <laughs> <laughs> sorry i haven't eaten in three days gotta get it in when i can look at me wasting away <laughs> Where did you get that shirt, Harry? I think it's YY. <laughs> yeah. YY, he's so cute. So in lieu of getting him a job, I've decided just to send him to New York for a long weekend. Oh, that's <laughs> hilarious. Oh, by the way, sorry to be the late bearer of bad news, but Bill said that they're doing, like no. the owners are doing their own intern product, AKA nepotism. So sorry. <laughs> That's okay. This was kind of nepotism too. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Um, it's, it's late in the summer for me to be looking, helping, but um, uh, we decided this morning that I'm going to take him to New York and I will show him the city and that will be more of an education that he could have even gotten at any other job. When are you guys going? Um, the first, I think we're looking, but like first weekend in august maybe and uh you know take him around some beer companies and nice. mix business with pleasure show him the haunts uh, is, is this not is this just because you got fomo because i'm gonna be in new york that exact time i can't allow you to be more than 30 miles outside <laughs> my orbit that is true i get heart oh. palpitations oh <laughs> Uh, I didn't get away I didn't, from you. I didn't realize that was that weekend, but that that's perfect. That I didn't I was, realize this. Harry. I was the one of the things I was worried about. Was like, I might have plans, you know, with Melson. I don't, I don't know. We don't write those down, but good. You'll be, uh, you'll be at Saratoga. I'll be in New York city. Um, Wyatt and I and his girlfriend, <laughs> that was part of the, you know, that's the watermelon sugar high. You got to oh, put Lord. on the sprinkle on top to get him to go. But, you know, why, why should I let him go work for somebody else who's less smart and engaging and intelligent as I am? He's got his, his own father could teach him everything he needs to know. I mean, I did it with Jordan. I did it with Emily. I did it with Jen a little bit. <laughs> and then after you, I kind of quit. I'd like to make it clear with it when she says clean my my bedpan that it was tinkle only. <laughs> I, I, I did manage to crawl my fat that ass. That only barely floor. makes it better. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, right. barely. And the second day it got he drank so much water that he started pissing in styrofoam cups. <laughs> and so it went from a bedpan to start. And I'm like, am I back working for nursing homes? Like what in the actual <laughs> fuck have I gotten myself into? Like that was you, my entire weekend. You knew that bedpans would be part of it. If I start texting y'all at like 4 p.m. Like, hey, are you up? Like, this is, you know why. Like, <laughs> oh my God. That's funny. I had the opposite problem since we drove <clears throat> to California and- the dog she didn't pee for over 24 hours it was very concerning <laughs> and she Aww. wouldn't go we let her out walk around and she'd be like this area mm. is not secure <laughs> <laughs> and she <laughs> refused we had to finally like get her into the hotel and be like we're staying here like we've stopped you you need to go now and Aww. finally she went out and peed and it was, it was so long Oh, like you poor thing. I know she does so well in the car, except for that. Just refuses to go to the bathroom Harry anywhere that's the training starts. by her. I know. <laughs> well, a, a biscuit, because I couldn't get to the door to let her out. She she went a full like 12 or 14 hours without going out. She was groaning at the end though. She's going, <laughs> she was good though. I mean, like she held it until I could take her out. Yeah. You know, Harry, it's funny that you mention a show. Um, we're watching, we're finally watching Succession, which is amazing. And God, Logan Roy reminds me so much of you. The asshole? The asshole Yeah, boss? the main codrol dude is so effing stubborn. Yeah, show. Oh, the dad. The dad. The, dad. the guy okay. who pees everywhere, that guy. 
way. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you. That's a yeah. compliment. Yeah, it would be, right? Now we're back into podcasts. Now I'm going to have to recut this <laughs> all crazy. <laughs> yes, that I can appreciate that guy. You know, and, and, and that actor, every role he plays in every show uh, reminds me of myself. I love that guy. Obviously. Well, he was in Super Troopers, right? Yeah. Yeah, he oh, was. He, he was? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna pistol whip the next person who says shenanigans. Oh my gosh! <laughs> the next person who says shenanigans. <laughs> and there's there anything better than pistol whip? <laughs> oh, I used that in a letter to a. Uh, she was a, you know, on the city council. I lived in the city of Houston. She was my councilwoman. I sent her a letter because I had to a pistol whip. <laughs> well, uh, a little concern. Where's this going? Well, Here Hobo had, uh, had wandered into my yard, so I – it's in the middle of the night, so I should put a pistol into my underwear, and he wouldn't live, so I pistol whipped him, and he left. And I wrote the letter, and I said, I had to – the crime is so bad to pistol whip a hobo. It's cause, because the city had a, a right-of-way right behind my property, and they wouldn't mow it, so they'd all breed and live back there. <laughs> breed. <laughs> Also, like Westheimer and San Felipe. Like, yeah. Yeah. Right where those railroad tracks are. Yeah. I think I pistol with you with that same exact gun once. No, you pistol with me with a, no, it was with an iPad. It was a little different, but <laughs> you iPaded me. I thought, wow, I don't think I'd ever use this phrase before and probably ne hopefully never, never again, but it was oddly satisfying. I didn't pistol with them hard. It was more of a gesture, like, don't make me do this for real type thing, you know, and then kind of psh, acting it out. I didn't really hurt the guy. A polite pistol whip. It was a polite pistol whip. You know, yeah. it's one of those things where you're a lot more nacho and you have your testosterone levels are really high when you have like two little babies in the house, you know, and a, and a wife and, you know, it's like, and a dog, you're like, uh. I gotta protect my territory. If it happened now, I'd probably invite him in for a brandy. Ask him if he has any weed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh Jesus. <laughs> hey man. A hooker, a hooker tried to get into Harry's house the other night. So we have <laughs> both. When did that happen? Jesus Christ, Harry. You are not a hooker, Melissa. Don't say things. Thank like God. That. No, like UPS was trying to get in and she was like. A, a hooker she was uh, messed out she was like trying to get into harry's place harry's like no no i'm sorry i gotta go i gotta and then he went and like ducked and hid in the bathroom and a Mill a millicent was on uh facetime so she got to witness the whole thing yeah, and i like, hear her outside and i'm like who the fuck is there well it's because you know biscuit runs out tries to make friends with everybody and biscuit is in security but she still hasn't figured out who his potential threat and who's not um pretty much from now everybody is not a potential threat so <laughs> and uh and you know and he he smelled drugs on her so naturally he thought she was a friend <laughs> so, well, you know so i i gotta show you all this i won all of this with 60 dollars. it is hey, embarrassing look at all that i won all of that plus four cases of beer we're in the alcohol beverage business, and Millicent wins a raffle that wins her all of that free alcohol. It's like it's not so not fair. It's like, no, like, and there were there were like twenty seven hundred people that entered the raffle, and I fucking won. I'm like, how did that, what? And I have a bunch of, and then it came in like an igloo, and I googled the igloo, and it was like two hundred and fifty dollars. And then me and my psychotic self sat here and added up how much all of the booze was. So everything equated to almost two grand and I paid $60. I'm like, what the fuck? When they were dropping it off on my front doorstep, I was like, oh my, my neighbors <laughs> already, they see Harry, the dog, they see booze a lot. Like, Imagine seeing like, an older man and a dog. Well, no, just I'm like half your age, Jesus. So they see you like hobbling in with your cane and your fucking dog shitting in their yards. And Harry's like, God damn it. Yeah, see an old German walk in with his hound dog. Well, good. I'm glad you got all that liquor as soon as I quit drinking. 
That's really good timing. I don't even know what I'm going to do with it. Like crown peach, crown apple, Syrah, Hennessy. Hello, Christmas. Christmas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just start giving it away when you go over to people's houses. I know. Well, I hope I get invited anywhere. Oh, so with the, no, like, no, like with the D variant, you know, people are already getting fucking hyper. So, yeah, I call that the D bag strain because it's being <laughs> a real D bag coming into our lives with his hat on backwards. But, you know, like those D bags with their Louis Vuitton hats on backwards. Oh, backwards? We're in baggy pants <laughs> with the pants on the ground. Jordan, you got your pants on the ground. When you first oh. worked here, you got <laughs> pants on the ground. That was a phase. Yeah. Glad you got <laughs> out of that phase. Grew out of that. Grew into my pants. <laughs> the second time they wouldn't let him into saver, he decided to up his, <laughs> his fit game. <laughs> Is that true? No, I've never been to saver. <laughs> Jordan, no. Uh, yeah, just imagine that that would be the type of event that would turn Jordan away. <laughs> saver. We haven't been to of... saver in years. Uh, but, well, yeah, it's a bunch of pretentious assholes. But it's about... fun. Well, you can go. never go now. You, you used to, there was there was a year I forget when it was like 2017 or 18. You were like, we're not going to that anymore. I was like, okay. Well, you can go. They already canceled Jen, it. Jen, Jen. You, know, you went to Miami and I didn't even know till you got back. Yeah, but like there was actually something to be gleaned from there. Well, I mean, Saver, there will be suppliers there. I just don't like, I just find it boring. That's why I don't go. I mean, that I'm, I, I get the purpose of the event. And yeah. Boydy toy, let all the Washington hobnobbers get together, but let them do that without me this year. You know? I don't think, yeah, they won't have it this year, right? Yeah, I don't think they're having it this year. I don't doubt they have it ever yeah. again. It's expensive and they lost yeah. money, I'm sure, on it. Yeah, um, that one may be a, a goner. Well, maybe we can do something for drankers. Savers. <laughs> oh <my> <laughs> yeah, only Jim would come up with the con. Let's replace the most horrible event in the beer industry. It wasn't industry. horrible. It wasn't horrible. Equally horrible event. <laughs> But um, no, speaking of super fast, and this is like the last thing anybody cares about right now, but uh, we'll probably do our Houston drankers after um, MBWA, right? Or what do y'all think? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because we're going to have one in MBWA yeah. October 3rd. And then we'll, uh, yeah, let's just do it after. That way it won't be, we'll know the weather will be better. Yeah, it won't sure. be a swamp or as swampy. <laughs> and Ben, is Ben hunting for November? Or, no, he's, I, he's, no he's having it right yeah all right i gotta hop off yeah we i have to work we we yeah you're welcome yeah. <laughs> i have a real job <laughs> well i wouldn't go that far <laughs> <laughs> don't sell yourself short there <laughs> nah to all of us here at Shoemaker Publishing. To all of you sitting at home by the fire, <laughs> probably enjoying a nice alcoholic beverage of your <laughs> choice, we wish you a happy, happy hot girl summer. <laughs> may all oh my God. <laughs> this, may this summer be uh, hotter. Oh, hey, I gotta go. Fun. Let me give you the longest goodbye. All right, guys. Thank you for drinking a beer. See you later. Sayonara. Goodbye. Adios.